Hello, I'd like to address a topic that has been on uh, my mind for on and off for about 15 years or so. Um, years ago, I, I did a short um, article on a, a Christian apologetics which addressed um, this topic, uh, but it concerns the difficulty or the inconsistency uh, that we find um, in in critics, skeptics, uh, atheists, and others who uh, wish to uh, imply a um, a type of value judgment about God, such as that he's immoral, or perhaps that the conception of the Christian God is incoherent in some fashion, um, and also maintain, um, perhaps in a, a slightly different context, that the writings of the the scriptures that that portray the Christian God, um, the Bible would be um, fundamentally flawed. Let's just say fundamentally and structurally flawed. Um, and this is uh, the latter uh, tactic is often uh, performed by attempting to show uh, perhaps that the peoples that would have um, wrote the Bible stories were subliterate or illiterate uh, or they were that they were incapable of what we would call uh, objective journalistic reporting perhaps by today's standards or um, by just standards of basic integrity for example um, these two uh, points of view when seen, when compared side by side, um, will definitely pose some some difficulties, though, for the um, for the biblical critic or the uh, the skeptic who is attempting to show uh, that the Christian God has a um, some type of deficiency or is just unbelievable, you know, in some uh, way or another. Um, one of the ways in which the former um, strategies employed it, years ago I read a book by uh, the famous um, psychiatrist Carl Gustavus Jung um, and his book, uh, let's see, that I was, um, that I think pertains to this issue is called Answer to Job. And in that, I think it, he began an argument towards the beginning of the book that this is just, uh, in his view, this is just an incredible you know, portrait of God. Just unbelievable um, that this would represent any type of real deity. It was obviously some kind of an imaginary God that was thought up by um, some um, maybe a polytheistic group. But I, I think I think Jung associated it with a canine, some kind of a canine deity. And obviously, from that perspective, um, we don't really have. A, an ability to in any way um, inculpate or uh, pose serious um, problems with the Christian God because the, the writers um, themselves would have been completely uh, mistaken in their notions of God, in their conception of God, how they were writing about God. Um, the concepts that they were using would have been um, just completely um, uh, silly um, or absurd. And and I think I've found this a little bit uh, to be true um, uh, in other contexts as well. I, I believe it was a debate between Dan Barker and Douglas Wilson years ago where Dan Barker was trying to argue um, that the people, um, you know, were barbaric, the Israelites that were following this Yahweh God were just, you know, absolutely barbaric and, and subliterate and and incapable of, of um, you know, you might even say rational thought. And maybe he was pushed into a bit of a corner or it was a heated exchange. And he may have overstated his case here. But at any rate, he was trying to maintain that on the one hand. And then it seemed like on the other, he was actually using that quoting from the Bible um, in, in, in many ways um, as an authoritative text on who um, the Christian God is. And so... Um, and how and how he just can't be, and so this this um, doesn't um, it doesn't seem to be a very uh, these two positions or points of views can't can't really be logically uh, maintained uh, side by side. I, I don't I think this is maybe a case where the uh, atheist agnostic Bible critic can't uh, uh, eat their cake and have it too. 
um, certainly there are um, there are some issues with with that type of of um, uh, argument or criticism of the Bible and or the biblical God. Um, so in I guess to break it down a little bit more, analyze some of the the problems with that. Um, with maintaining those two positions somewhat simultaneously um, would be that um, in asserting um, that the fabric of the Bible is contaminated or it's um, it was written by people who were deluded, deceived, insane, whatever, um, they would not be producing an accurate, um, they, they probably wouldn't be able to accurately report um, the historical circumstances. So you cannot turn back to those narratives, to those accounts, and then attempt to criticize um, the God portrayed there and say, well, this is a um, vicious God or something. This would be, um, if, if the former uh, point of view is true, then this would be a um, then this would would not even be an existent uh, God at all. This this God would just be a, a figment of their imaginations, um, so to speak. Um, so you certainly wouldn't be able to uh, criticize that God is immoral or try to use um, flawed and uh, narratives to attempt to demonstrate that he's uh, vicious or or immoral or worthy of condemnation or anything of that. Uh, sort. Um, and I, I do think that this, uh, this counter-argument against holding uh, both these views is certainly worthy of uh, further uh, contemplation, further uh, development, and um, I think it ties in nicely to uh, some of the uh, work that my, uh, that my son is doing right now in this area of the um, understanding the uh, moral critique, the, the attempt at a moral critique of the nature of the Christian God. And um, um, that's all I have for now, and I will probably address this in a, uh, a little bit more, maybe um, develop some of the uh, transcendental, um, the implications for a transcendental argument um, about the nature of God and the accuracy or the reliability of the um, scriptural uh, narratives uh, in the future. Um, but for now, I, I, there's probably some um, also some work that could be done in, in actually looking at specific cases um, in which these two positions are are maintained. Um, there's probably some, certainly some Bible critics that have also attempted to uh, maintain some type of middle ground um, where the people actually experiencing the events or the, uh, the, the, the presumed biblical writers um, would have been uh, subliterate, but then perhaps later editors or uh, composers uh, would have um, changed the text to fit a certain uh, theological um, doctrine or narrative, um, and um, so th there are probably some compromise compromise positions that could be uh, achieved as well. But um, for now, I, I just wanted to uh, make that point, and I, and I certainly welcome um, responses, uh, video responses on this topic. I, I think it's uh, again, I think it's worthy of a further exploration. Thank you.